<laughs> hey, hey, this is Glenn and Cameron, and uh, welcome to 30 Days $2,500. <laughs> and um, if you've never been here before, uh, there's a few things you need to know. Uh, you will need pen, paper, such things, such as that, because there's tasks. Uh, this webinar is about action. It's about getting you to do stuff. It's geared for you to do tasks, to make lists, to think, to be different than you were before you came here. So there's a lot of activity in it. Just to be unvarnished, if you don't do the exercises, you will not get the maximum benefits of this course. Also, if you show up when the course is going on, between the hours of 4 and 5, you get me for free. If you want the recorded sessions, you have to join the Facebook group or my online platform. I will show you how to do that after the presentation. If you have a question or questions about something that I'm talking about, feel free to ask it and when I come out of the presentation, I will answer it. So with that, let's rock and roll. As I already kind of alluded to, you need a sheet of paper, a pen, a pencil, and a calendar. As uh, this is day 17, we're past the midpoint. We are rocking and rolling along. We've got a few people in the $25,000, $20,000, dollars $21,000 range in less, in less than 15 days of doing this. Very proud of that. A lot of people have crossed over the $2,500 mark. Very proud of that. The deal is, if you do the stuff, you will be successful. Now, this was one of the, from the last webinar. Now, they hook up together. There's a lot of things that you're going to need. Because you're going to need stuff like day 1 through 10 is a lot of ground building stuff. Because you're going to need that stuff to go further. Because you're going to have to reflect back to some of that stuff. Now, this was one of the tasks. And... I'm going to put it here because it doesn't seem like this makes any sense because most people are like, well, I just want to get business advice. I just want someone to tell me how to get widget A and put it on platform Z and yield a profits of Y. That's what I want. I don't want any of this other stuff. I just want cookie cutter advice. If that's what you're looking for, sign off, go away. This is not the webinar for you. If you're looking to expand your creative mindset which is the core of anybody making money in this new digital world and then you're at the right place if you're looking to do something differently if you're looking and one thing about this my background is that of the storage auction business this these techniques will help you with poodle business with a car wash with a dog walking service, with a cleaning service, with with creating apps. The, the stuff in this course will help you with any business. And it was designed that way because when in, the, in my Facebook group, the Hustle University, I actually put the pilot of the storage auction show that I would have been a member of. It was done in 2010. Everyone's like cracking up because it's like, is that you? I was a real asshole when I was in the storage auction business. I had to be. It wasn't a nice guy business. It was like dog eat dog. But those principles helped me with that business. And those principles helped me. Never wrote a book before. Started... July 17th, 2009, wrote a book, finished up in October. In the first 14 months of selling that book, I made $62,000. No, I did not set the world on fire, but I taught myself how to make money strictly from my mind in a free competitive marketplace. And that's what I'm giving you, how to use your assets, how to make money, how to do these things with what you already have. Now, let's talk about this cow. He, you will see him again. You will see him again. But now, for many people, you know, if you did this, you had a great weekend. If you did it for friends, they had a great weekend. Now, the whole deal about this is, is for you to start to think outside of yourself. Many of us are me, 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 with no do, re, so, me. No, it's just me, 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 me. And if you can do this and start asking yourself, like, okay, well, I'm going to do this for the wife. What is she like? 
Because, you know, the function and everything is just to go to a very expensive restaurant, dress up nice, and go out. That can be really boring if that's not what the person wants. Now, you take someone who's never been to a really high-class restaurant or five-star restaurant where they're so busy waiting on you that you can't even have a conversation because every time you look up, there's Garcon or Betty Boo or whoever is serving you. It can blow their mind. But if you really start thinking, what does this person like? What, you know, If you're doing it for your friends, it's like, okay, what's Bill and Jill like? What can I do for them? It gets you to thinking on a different level. And that's one of the core things about this course. I want you to think about things on a different level. So hopefully you did that and hopefully you had fun. You know, if you were here last week, because this dropped Friday, if you did that, please put it in the uh, questions what went down. We're here to my favorite part. I need your word. I pledge to make myself better today than I was yesterday. Day by day, I will become the hustler I know I can be. I am all in. When you commit yourself to success on a daily basis, you will definitely prime the pump for future success. It is very, very important. When I was in the military, I had to swear an oath, and I took it very seriously, just as everyone else that I know who did the same. It motivates you, and it moves you from a different place. Today is day 17, sourcing oxygen to your hustle. Okay, now we're talking about sourcing. This is mostly resale, or it could be new stuff. But one of the things I learned about the storage auction business, because I will lean on that experience today, is creativity can make you a lot of money. Now, I want you to look at this picture of these jars and these gumballs. Pretty, pretty, pretty uh, benign. Not really, you know, like, okay, if you like gumballs, you're like, yeah. You know, if you like jars, you're like, yeah. If you like gumballs and jars, you're like, yeah, baby. But really, pretty nondescript, right? Well, let me tell you, and I'm just amazed I was able to find this picture because I didn't take it. I've ripped it off the internet. But... We bought a unit, and this is my partner I used to call Arts and Crafts. We bought a unit that was full of gumballs, brand new gumballs in the bags, bags and bags of gumballs. And we were looking at selling them, but gumballs were not commanding a lot of price. Well, Francine, Miss Arts and Crafts, we had also had bought a unit sometime in advance. It was full of these little jars, just like this, except they were bigger. They're about twice the size, but the same general the type of device with the, the click lid and everything. And uh, she's like, well, let's put the gumballs in jars and sell them. We really weren't going to get that much for the gumballs, but gumballs in jars with a bow on it went for five bucks a piece. When it, and this went on for a long time because we, I mean, the unit was 10 by 20 full of gumballs. Just, I mean, all kind of like some of those suckers were good, like sour gumballs, like the really fruit punch. I mean, it was, that was awesome. I was chewing gum for a long time. And when we finally sold the last one, because it took like the better part of a year, because we, you know, they just went out every weekend, we realized about 16 grand. Now, if we had just wholesaled the gumballs out to people who wanted them in the jars, we probably would have made three or four thousand. So a $12,000 differential selling the same product, but different packaging. Let me say that again. Same gumballs, same jars, but because we took a little time and a little effort to create something a little different, we got more money, way more money. People were like, uh, yeah, I'll take 10 because these are nice gift ideas. So if you're out there like looking for a product, and that's what we're going to talk about with this part of sourcing, don't lock yourself into, oh, those are just gumballs. Oh, those are just jars. Those could be a basket item. Those could be a gift item. It's just, as um, Sir Ken Robinson said, that the reason uh, schools kill creativity, I think they do, unless you're an artistic person and you just push past that, there could be something in your house, in your warehouse right now that you can look at with a different set of eyes that can realize you a twelve, a fifteen, a fifty thousand dollar differential. It's just how you put it together and how you package it and how you present it to the world. 
that is, you know, creative sourcing methods. Because once again, to talk like that guy or that girl that's like, well, I just want that linear, you know, give me the cookie cutter stuff. I don't want any of this stuff where I got to think and use my mind. What are you talking about, Linda Kim? I don't want to use my mind. No, no, no. I haven't used my mind since I've had it. I'm not trying to break it, man. <laughs> Seriously, just little, and this is not like a radical departure. It's just the little tweaks here, little, little, you know, little move here, a little annotation here. Just, I mean, seriously, my partner was a genius because we made a lot of money off those gumballs, and we ate a shitload too. Now, I talk about this a lot. Many people feel that because we live in the matrix. I love that analogy because it's very, it works for me. It works for me. That they are prey to the powers that be. Okay. Where are you right now? It's the middle of the day and you're listening to me on YouTube doing this program that I came up with in an hour and just started sketching out and went into it. When you build your own sandbox, you can do the same thing that I did. Uh, I'll tell you this program which is free, has probably generated, it will probably generate five figures before the end of this month. And it's free. And ultimately, because it's going to be a long-term project, that's why I made the 30 days to $2,500 group. That's why that's going to the lifetime deal. Um, it's going to go on and on. And this is what happens when you build your own sandbox and when you can see the possibilities of things that are not there. Because, I mean, they're there, but they're not there. You, like, okay, let's look at this sandbox. And just to give you an example, what it is, it's a lawn, right? What do you see? You see a sandbox with some sand in it. I see one, two, three, four, two by sixes or maybe two by eights. I see two two by sixes. There's some nails. Now, in your mind, deconstruct this sandbox. And there's some sand and there's a few toys. This started off as a few bags of sand and some wood stacked up together. When you saw that wood, you didn't see a sandbox. You just like, oh, there's some wood and some sand. You didn't see the sandbox, but that's what it was. There are many times that you're missing these things in your life because you're stuck on, well, that's what it is, and that's all that it will ever be. Learn to see opportunity and disaster, too, because this is something that started with rent a crate, uh, went on with business environments. I had many scary, scary moments in business. The first one was sweating the crates with rent a crate because we I was in the office late. I was getting ready to run out the door, but for some reason, I answered the phone and it was a customer and they needed some crates the next day. It was Friday. So I called Karen, Karen Osborne, that's her name, I actually remember her name. And I called Karen and I was like, Karen, we, we, there's a big order. It's the biggest one we've ever got in this branch. We don't have any crates. What do I do? What do I do? do I, can we get some of them up from Boston? Blah? And she's like, Glendon, calm down. Call Chris, tell him to sweat the crates. He'll know what to do. Okay, so I called Chris. Hey, Chris, it's Glendon, boom, boom. Oh, okay, okay, I'll be, I'll be there in 30 minutes. So Chris comes, he gets the truck, and he's like, okay, we need to go get some crates. So it's like, we... <laughs> I was getting ready to leave, right? So we go in there. So we go to all of these companies that had crates. But the thing is, every day when they were finished with crates, they would like have this list. So we went to like five buildings and got enough crates to fulfill the first order. So when I talked to Karen later, she's like, you went with Chris and what did you learn? I said, well, essentially, as long as those crates are out there, they're making money. If they're in the warehouse, they're not making money. She said, exactly. That's why we sweat the crates. It's a great time that when we have a customer in these order, it gives us an excuse to go get those crates that the customers are finished with and bring them, you know, take another customer. She said, I would love for that warehouse to be empty all the time. And I was just like, wow. And it was a trans transformative experience for me because where I originally saw just disaster, you know, the storm, there was a lot of money in that. It was just about thinking a little differently. And once again, here's your first task. I want you to create a list of 50 concepts that you think you can make money performing. Doesn't matter if you think it will work. Out of the list, one or two or more would be viable. 
This is going back to stretching yourself. This is going back to really thinking. I don't care. You can put, you know, you can steal the gumball and jar thing if you want to. Don't care. You can put it on your list. That's one. You still have 49 more you need to think about. 49. Yeah. So this is to get for those people. Glendon, why are you making me think? I don't want to think. I just want to get paid, man. I just want to get paid. That's, I don't want to... If you're still here, you need to leave because you're you're messing up my my mojo. But when you look at this, and it's going to be hard because you you know some of you are going to get to fifty, some of you are going to get past fifty, some of you are going to struggle to get to twenty. But when you start digging into yourself and start thinking about this stuff, you could come up with the next billion dollar idea. So you start thinking it could work. Because this is the thing, people are like, oh, God, if I do this, it's not going to work. What if I lose money? What if it, What if I'm embarrassed? What if my pants fall down when I'm presenting? What, what if, what if, what if? But most of the what if is not really constructive to positive performance. But a lot of the what ifs is fear. It's embarrassment. And many of the what ifs that go on the fear side could come true. I'm not one to sit here and go, oh, no, you do something, it's going to work out. I actually, my first five businesses failed. And I was talked about by friends and family. And it was just like, one person said, you know, you have tried five times. I'm not trying to be mean to you. Maybe, well, not even maybe. You're just not cut out to be an entrepreneur. You just don't have what it takes. Real entrepreneurs get it, just get it. They come out, they do it. The business is successful. That person was someone I was dating at the time. It cut like a rusty knife dragged slowly across my skin. I couldn't sleep that night. And um, I almost gave up. I almost gave up because I was just like, well, maybe she's right. Then I woke up and I did the most sensible thing possible. I put sugar in her tank. Sad, sad, but true. Bad Glenda, but yeah, I did that. And I uh, never spoke to her again. Um, wonder how that worked out. Then I went on and started business number six, four months later, and it was successful. It is, um, no, I didn't put sugar in the check. I'm not that bad of a person. That's crazy. That's crazy stuff. Thought about it. Had the sugar, was walking toward the car, and I talked myself off the ledge. But um, but I did break up with her, and I did start dating her best friend. That was my revenge, and it was good. But <laughs> that part's true. And uh, the whole deal is, you have to become comfortable with not getting desired outcomes the first time. Notice how I said that. I didn't say become comfortable with failure. I don't want you to become comfortable with failure. I want you to become comfortable with not getting the desired outcomes. Like when you were the little bitty kid and you were crawling on the floor and then one day you start pulling up on stuff and a few days later you pulled up some more and a few weeks later you were kind of doing that little swabble, the wobble walk. Each time you pulled up and fell down, that was an undesirable outcome. But you were like, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. And if you can go back to that infant-like enthusiasm, I'm going to get it. I'm going to keep trying. You'll get there. You'll definitely get there. Now, there is a such thing as actually making money. And this is a really, really wonderful quote. Logic will get you from A to B. Imagination will take you everywhere. Going back to the storage option business, when one of the old timers pulled me to the side, you know, you seem to have a knack for this, but don't put your heart on it. Don't try to turn this into a full-time living. It'll break your heart and break your heart. Break your heart. And I told him, I said, well, that's my intention to turn this into a full-time living. And did it. See, with your imagination, if you can see things before they happen with a great clarity, the chances of it happening are pretty much guaranteed. The greater the clarity, the more likely you are to have that outcome. But the thing is, and I learned this because uh, someone had commented on the uh, swimming pool exercise like they were messing up for two weeks. And it's just to let you know that your brain has been programmed to work against you. 
So if you can sit back and see this big, bold, beautiful vision, and it's just like in 4D, not even 3D, but 4D, not even 1080p, but 2190p, you're building that in your mind. And your mind's going to turn that into reality. Because you saw it, you were able to build it, you were able to feel it. You could, oh, you could even smell the air of that place. When you can get to that point, you can make it happen. I saw my first book done. I saw the YouTube channel being successful. I do, I don't do visual visualization per se. I do mental movies. There's not just like, you know, where I visualize. It's, it's a whole bunch of stuff that goes on in my mind. It's a scary place at times. It's a wonderful place. But I'll create these mental movies of my life the way that I want it to be. And with stereo and all kinds of stuff. So I want you to think about this. It's better to prove an ideal invalid to, than to uh, miss the chance for genius because of fear. You will fail a lot. You will make mistakes mistakes you will have missteps things will not turn out the way that you want them to but you cannot allow that to stop you from going forward now let's start with something that some people immediately gravitate to the fruit on the ground uh, many people are going like out of state <laughs> to the next country whatever and they kind of miss what's in their backyard now with the sourcing and you know like I said, we've got business owners taking this course and we have a lot of neophytes. It's like, I've never had a business. I want a business. I want to get started. And they're just feeling a little bit confused or just scared of the process. Well, you can start in your own house. <laughs> you can start. Because what do you think? I just talked to someone this weekend and I was saying, you know, you probably got about $7,000 worth of stuff in your house that you don't need that you could sell and bring some income. And she's like, yeah, whatever. And uh, she went home and she kind of started digging and she found some stuff and she put it on Craigslist and she got hits to the tune of, you know, it, I don't know if the deals are happening. I'll find out later. But like 1500 bucks. She she was just like blown away. So for you true art and hustlers who are going, yeah, 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 I already did that. We're going to find out because this is the verbal task. Once you know, because this is part of the garage sale thing, but there are new people here. Once you go through your house tonight and just anything, because this, you know, this has already been done, but I'm doing it again because a lot of people don't do it. And I realized because someone said that when I repeat stuff two and three times, that they actually like presses a button that's in the inner recesses of their soul and it goes on. So I'm pressing that button. Go around your house tonight and everything that you can think of that you don't need that you could potentially sell. Put it in the box. If you have a job, fine. Put it in the box. Put it in the bin. Take it to work with you if you can and list that shit on Craigslist. Start blowing it out. Start really, really blowing it out. You'll be amazed. Now, you once you do that, and that's why you have to do it again, This, all these houses represent your neighbors, your circle, your tribe. That's your boy, John. That's your girl, Jocelyn. That's, there's a bunch of people you know. And just like you have a bunch of stuff around your house, they do too. And especially if you have mid-income people, middle-income people, upper-income people, it's even more. And this is something I know because I live in the neighborhood. And I went around yesterday. I found a glass top coffee table that I know I can sell for 100 bucks. I actually picked it up. I actually went and got my SUV and went back and picked that sucker up. Uh, I actually saw a leather headboard stud. It was, I mean, you know, this, cause I'm, I'm, I'm working on something and I just saw this stuff. I was just like, good Lord. I probably spied six, $700 worth of stuff just on the streets yesterday. And I wasn't out that long. So people have stuff. So this is what you're going to do. What you're going to do. Once you do your stuff, you're going to reach out to 10 if you can see me, my hands will be flashing like twice. You're going to reach out to 10 people that you know, and you're going to say this. You know, I just cleaned out my house, and I was really just kind of blown away by how much crap I have. You're only going to reach out to one at a time. And I was just thinking, you know, um, this is what I want to do. And I'll be really straight up with you. I want to pay off some bills or something, you know, whatever you need to do. 
and let's do this. I'll come to your house and we'll do a 50-50 deal. I'll source the stuff, find the stuff, and I'll list it, sell it any way I can. And, you know, we just split the profits 50-50. They're going to say yes or they're going to say no. And then if they say yes, then you're going to go into that relationship with them and you're going to sell all of that crap, good, bad, whatever, eBay, Amazon, whatever you have to do, you're going to sell it. When you're done with them, you're going to go to number nine. And when you're done with them, you're going to go to number eight. And if five out of ten say no, then you're going to move up to 20 and you're going to keep asking until you get to your 10 people. This could take a month or two or three or four, depending upon who you know, how much stuff they have. But if you do this, you could probably make enough money to take a trip to Europe. Or maybe if, you know, depending on the people in your tribe, pay off your car. Just doing that. Not quitting your job. Just going to your tribe and saying, hey, and this is the pitch. This is the pitch. I did it for myself. That's social proof. It's like, yeah, and I was just like totally blown away. And, you know, I'm just going to do this. You have to get comfortable. Some people are going to be like, oh, I don't know about that, Wilbur. I don't know. And some are going to be like, where have you been all of my life? You don't know until you ask. And I had someone from a previous webinar about two years ago who was doing this in Texas. And she um, she got up to like 86,000 last time we talked. Yeah, 86 Gs. And she kept her job. Now, speaking of jobs, OJH, on the job hustle. This could be really tricky. Some places have a policy where you cannot sell stuff. Some places don't have a policy. So don't get in trouble. Don't cause yourself anything because you'll make sure that you can get away with this. And another way to do this is do not send out any email blasts. That's what you do. You go to people you can trust and be like, whisper, hey, yo, 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 I got some stuff for you. And you talk to them and say, look, I'm going, I'm doing this new enterprise. And do you want to be on the list? You create a total. And this is how you do real OJT. This is where a lot of people get in trouble when they do double time. Take your laptop to job take i mean everyone has an iphone right everyone has like an android mostly use your own wi-fi for your your stuff don't use their stuff don't use their resources don't use their computers use your own stuff to look this things up do what you need to do but create your list go to people have a little five minute conversation with it because here's some math for you Say you work in an organization and you can get 30 people on your list. Say you're selling crackers. Say you're selling gourmet crackers and coffee. You're going to say gourmet crackers and coffee. Your cost for this stuff is 10 bucks, but you can sell it 30 for $30 every day, all day long. 30 people, right? The cost is 10 bucks. You sell it for 30. Then you do the math. You're netting out at $20 profit times 30, 600 bucks. Now, what are, we, what are we selling? We're selling a consumable, which means next month, you can do another 600 bucks. Well, wait a minute. Since they like you, your, your network has now expanded to not 30 people, but 40, because they refer some people outside of your work network. And now they're doing it 40. So now you're at 800 bucks. You can scale that to epic proportions so you know the stuff like man i got a job i can't hustle you have a mental block and you don't want to hustle because even if you have the hr policy this is how you get past that you you, you do something that you never thought about you go ahead and you have a spread at your house it's like look i'm having this barbecue i'm having this kickback i'm having this cookout and you invite all the cool people the cool kids or anyone you feel you can get money out of and bring them to your house and then pitch them there don't take no for an answer <laughs> you can do this man or woman look at this chick she went down to the water there was an anaconda down there that she had to beat back there was some black mambas and there was some alligators and some hippos because she had to get water for her family she had to walk down there with the, you know, Bob the, the burrow and get this stuff done. No, it was not. An, well, we can't get. No, that wasn't. That, that, was, that wasn't an option. Fairy wasn't an option. That's why she walked in with a limp because she got bit by the anaconda. But the whole deal is if you want to figure out a way 
you will figure out a way. If you want to fail, you're going to do it quickly. Now, here's another way to get stuff, and it's you know about it, but many people don't do it right. And incidentally, this is how I got my first Gmail account, Craigslist or Free Section. I was there. Um, I used to comb the Craigslist Free Section because it was like crack to me. My thing was I would find two or three high quality items for two or three hours search. That was my ratio. High quality to me was something I can sell for 50 bucks or more. So I factored it out that I found uh, you know, $300 worth of stuff. I spent three bucks, three hours there. That was 100 bucks an hour for my time. Not bad money, especially back then. It wasn't bad money. And I routinely do that. And you can still do it to the day. You will go on Craigslist and it'll be like, oh, God, this is crap. Now, what's going to really be some of the juicy stuff is the things without pictures. Because a lot of people ignore those. This is like, eh, it's probably nothing. And there will be times that you will get in your car and you will waste kit, gas, and it will be nothing. Or you'll be like, oh my God, this is a crime scene. But that's just, it's, it's the law of averages. Because this is where people mess up. It's consistency that got me the deals. Because sometimes I'll go three or four days. Wouldn't you see nothing? Just be like, man, I see why they're giving this shit away. And then I have two or three days, boom, boom, boom. I'm finding all kinds of stuff. It's the consistency of the habit. Now, I want you to see something here. Okay. It's an old bass boat. If you're a scrapper, that boat's probably metal. Think about that. Metal boat, 80, 90 pounds, maybe more. Boards. So you, you, you have to kind of, once again, going back to what I said in the beginning, you have to learn to look at stuff differently because it's like, oh, oh, bass boat. <sighs> Email them. Is the boat made of metal? Yes, it is. Go get that bitch. Check this out. Cleaning out the garage today. Email, and email them. Go up there and see this is something else. You go up there, right, for a few things, and you have to learn how to be... Because this is why a lot of the exercises in the beginning was about going out and meeting people and getting hugs and doing this stuff. You have to become comfortable talking to people. So here's, the, you know, here's uh, Melvin. He's cleaning out his garage. And you go up in there, right? And you're just like, okay, Melvin, uh, I know it's going to sound crazy, but do you have any broken jewelry in the house? Oh, God, yeah, my ex-wife, that hell left all kind of stuff here. Yeah, matter of fact, yeah, let me show it to you. So you go up there with Melvin. You know, there's like broken jewelry, that's good jewelry. It's like, I'll take all the jewelry for 50 bucks because she spied about $300 worth of real gold in there. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Look, yeah, she left these coach purses. Oh, my girl loves coach. Next thing you know, you went up there for some free stuff and you left with two, three thousand dollars worth of stuff that you got for a hundred bucks. Because you t went in and you asked more questions. You were personable, you were a salesperson. Just remember, if you don't work it, it will not work for you. Now, this is my partner just talked about me so bad because of this. Let me just state at the beginning, I was going there for six filing cabinets. They were in the free section. I saw them and they said those words. They said Herman Miller. And I was like, Herman Miller filing cabinets? Hmm. This could be interesting. So I call them up because they had a number. And it's like, yes, we got the cabinets. So I go there for the cabinets. And the cabinets aren't Herman Miller. They're actually Han, but they're in good condition. And they have something that's extremely important. They have keys in the locks. That was just like, oh. Because, I mean, that's always the thing. People's like, hey, there's a lock. Key. I was just like, yeah, I'll, get, I'll take them. And I immediately went, turned all the locks, make sure the keys and everything worked. Went and got my dolly. Moving those suckers out, put the keys in my pocket in a little plastic bag and everything, and you know, load up the truck, then went back because there was an office and they was cleaning stuff out. And I was just being personable. I was just like, Wow, you've got a lot of stuff. What else are you getting rid of? Well, we we're gonna get rid of these desks and we we're trying to sell them. Nobody wants them, they're gone. Really gone. I'll just, you know, I'll take what I can right now and I have to come back. Well, we don't have to be out to the end of the month, so you can take your time. Okay. I'll get some desk. 
This time I was lifting a lot of weight. I was buff. I was diesel. And, you know, I went back to get on the desk and somebody just took her jacket off. And for some reason that blouse was real just plunging for some reason. And one thing happened. Next thing I know, I had a girlfriend. <laughs> so... <laughs> My partner dogged me for months about that. Only you can go for file cabinets and come back with a girlfriend. Only you. Only you, my good man. Only you. All right. Enough of my crass ways. Becoming a solution. Think of ways to solve problems with money will come to you. Start looking at whatever problems that you have with merchandise or services and think, okay, what else? Would, would my neighbors have these problems? Would my friends have these problems with my family? Because the big thing that happens and one of the reasons I'm doing this course is people want to make money online, but the old ways have changed. Like, you know, you can still make money with blogging. You can still make money with podcasting, but how do you do it today? Because the information that was relevant in 2009 has changed a little bit. And it's changed a little bit in 2010. It's changed a little bit. So you have to get in that problem-solving mode. Because in earlier uh, days, we talked about social media. We talked about platforms. Because I have learned that you are better off with a platform than just pushing, you know, than paper or click advertising. Because the thing is, you can make money with paid advertising, but you have to understand how it works and how to use it for your business. And all paid advertising doesn't work for all businesses. Uh, that some people won't tell you. And I'm like, yeah, you know, if you spend this much, yeah, you should. So there are some people who have no business paying for advertising online because it's just not going to work for their business. They would have to use other marketing methodology. So that's what about becoming a solution. Really, really think about that. Also become solution driven. This is something else. Yes, this is another task. There's a bunch of tasks here. Find a business to become a salesperson. Say you have a Tito's Tire Shop in your neighborhood. This is how you can get Tito to pay you attention. It's like, Tito, I need some money. And he's going, man, everybody need money. I need money, man. You, you got some money to give me? Tito, no, listen up, listen up. Put the uh, cooler down. And I've uh, gone out and I've uh, sourced out some customers. And this is, I just want to work a deal. It's like, anyone I bring to you for X amount of tires, how much can I get in commission? And Tito's like, you bring me people, I'll give you 50%, man, 50%. Then, you know, you've already stacked up a few customers because, once again, when you become a person who's not afraid to ask questions of strangers, you will find out that everyone has needs. Everyone has something that they need help with. Everyone. And if you can figure out what that is and provide a solution, you can uh, make some money. So, that's one way to make some money when you're absolutely broke. Come to free section every day. I guarantee you if you're in a robust Craigslist city and you hit that section, er, section every day hard, and my methodology was those three hours, I would hit it for an hour, like I would hit it first thing in the morning, I will hit it around 10, and I hit it around lunchtime. I didn't just sit there for three hours straight because, you know, that worked for me. Just boom, do something else, boom, do something else. And I always came up with stuff consistently if I did it consistently. Like I said, there might be a few days, there would be nothing on there. Didn't every day? It just, I was making it rain. And this is another way for you to make money and to think differently. Say you're a massage therapist for real. Not that chick loved me a long time, but you're a real massage therapist and you need a little scratch or you got people in your tribe and it's like, they don't have scratch. So you're like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, give you a massage give you like a coupon like you know pack of three massages and i charge 100 bucks an hour so that's 300 dollars. and since you don't have the money why don't you just give me something that i can sell for 300 bucks continue to push continue to look for ways to get money out of people because if you go okay I, I i can get these massages but they don't have no money man but what do they have they may have cupcakes they may have a cat they may have a cow they may have a goat you can sell a goat. People love goats. Goats are awesome. But anywho, <laughs> and you just create a hustle list of things going back to earlier task. All right. I have a uh, extremely goofy today and uh, I'm having a good time. 
So let's come out of there. Let's see. Let's look at the questions. Okay. I'm almost under time. Well, when I was listening to that video, there was just some things that went on. Again, it, it was ridiculous a lot. Uh, here's the Wayne. Just got a reply from my thank you letter exercise. Send it to folks who got me started doing commercial maintenance, and I got a very nice reply from them. They were happy to hear from me, invited me over, etc., etc. The obvious sometimes ain't obvious, like the gumballs in the jar or thank you for folks you haven't seen in a long time. It's true. Uh, we have someone who's up to $20,972 in sales. We're just going to say $2,100. <laughs> Someone's competitive. That's good. <sighs> Keep making us think. Make my head hurt from thinking, Dwayne. Betty, I hope you dropped her. <laughs> Jasmine... I'm glad you didn't for sure gonna take. I was like, yeah. Glendon, you should have seen my face. No, I knew that would get you. No, I wouldn't do anything. No, that would lock up someone's engine. That's thousands of dollars. I, I, I wasn't that hurt. Uh, Michael, hey, Glendon, last Friday you stated to email you for the garage sale book. I see the email that day. And when you, I sent them out. I sent out a bunch out. Uh, Dwayne, yep. Repeated concepts stick better than drive by notions. Josh, nice. Get five cameras. Get away. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, the way to the $21,000 person to have something to sell you. I bet you do. All right, this is David. I think I did the list you assigned with 100 items from the book you recommend. $100 startup. And I'm pushing forward with a few of them now. One of them is my core business. The big thing is getting started because lessons you learn can transfer from one thing to another and this this is another thing about when you're going through this process like say you start doing this course and you start doing all this thing people who know you are going to think you're nuts because well, why don't you stick with, they don't know what you're doing because it doesn't make sense to them because in their mind the only way that you can make money is to go to a job and get a paycheck so you're going to look like a loony person to them and that's why I advise people keep that stuff to yourself Uh, Josh, thanks for the garage sale ebook. Read it this weekend. One question: How do you respond to people who are shopping when they ask when when you get where you get all your stuff? Do you tell them you buy storage auctions? Oh, Josh, I used to lie my ass off. I because the thing is, it, toward the end, people were finding out, and I would see some of my customers at auctions, but they wouldn't buy because when they saw the eye popping prices and they had to buy the whole unit, they were like, "Oh, that's not gonna work for me." David, people who know me already thought I was nuts. No worries. <laughs> uh, yeah, all right. Let me do this again since uh, people are laughing about this. Um, go ahead and email me at glendontheamericanhustler.com and I will send you a free copy of the Garage Sale you book. Uh, Dwayne, yep, it's hard to retain your own brains to realize we can hustle for a buck instead of relying on the time clock. It's not just other folks, it's the guy and the gal in the mirror. We have to convince heck with we have to convince heck with the rest of the world. Yeah, the end of battle can be rough. Uh Josh, the 48 laws of power. I don't remember the exact law, but it says don't argue with people, show them what you can do. You said that before, Glenn. That's a good point because I used to be more of a talker than a doer, and I had to really work hard to switch to I'm doing stuff. I'm, you know, one of my little crazy sayings was I'm not gonna say shit. I'm just gonna do shit, and that was more for me than anyone else. There was no ominous meeting, but it was like I had to really get out of just talking a good game and actually playing a good game, and it was a struggle. Oh, I'm back. Uh, I, I am back in the real world. Dwayne, oh, never have a battle of wits with an unarmed person. <laughs> but it, it, it's funny. It's just funny the things that go on. Because what I'm learning from this course, and I just want to say everyone is here, thank you, I appreciate your presence, is that an ideal, 
can be very, very powerful if executed. Because there's a lot of people that have crossed over the $2,500 mark. There's other folks that are changing their business. They're looking at stuff differently. They're doing different things. And uh, it's pretty awesome. Chris. Craigslist sometimes I can match up the free section with the wanted section. It's beautiful. I just pick from the free section and deliver to the wanted section. Nothing out of the pocket for me but a pocket full of cash when I do this. You make a good point. And a lot of people don't even know there's a wanted section. Because so many people just don't post on it. But that's a great contribution. I appreciate it. Okay. It is 445. Nothing's going on. Just letting you know, I got to go to a funeral tomorrow. So I will. there will be no webinar tomorrow. Uh, Jasmine. Yeah, a lot of people say that you should tell people what, what you want to do. Hold yourself accountable. But some people do way more talking already. And they need to do the opposite, i.e. me. I have looked at that because there's this website where, you know, well, people are actually posting videos of themselves doing stuff. So there's a high degree of accountability. I, I think you have to find your own way about how, what works for you. But as much stuff as I talk, I do way more in action than I talk. And if you can get your action level to say, if you're speaking 90% of the time and you're doing stuff 10% of the time, you'll never get where you want to go. But if you can get action 50%, 60%, 70%, a lot of action. You know, you, you, you know, that's a lot of action. And it will get you where you want to go. Uh, Josh, do you have any motivational speakers you recommend? I enjoy Jim Ron, Zig Ziglin, Zig, Zig Ziglar, I know, and Brian Tracy. Funny thing you ask about that. Um when I got to a certain point, because I know all of those people, and I, I would say probably after Earl Nightingale, I listened to Brian Tracy. There was a guy named Jim Hopkins or Tommy, no, Tommy Hopkins. I stopped listening to those guys, and not because, you know, the information they were given was bad. When I started meditating, for some reason, when I learned to meditate, it gave me an internal cheerleader that I didn't need to listen to them because if you're going through something, I would suggest listening to all these guys and turning off the television, turning off the radio, because they're just going to fill your mind with all this good, positive mental food. But I actually don't listen to anybody right now. And, you know, just since you asked that question, it just made me realize I really don't. But I attribute that to meditation. Uh, Betty, I've been playing catch up with the webinars and you have a lot of great concepts. I can say this now that I am was dealing with a lot of fear and breaking the walls of doubt. I can only say that I'm fucking sick of helping other folks meet their dreams as they beat me down. People are out for number one. And sometimes it can hurt you when you realize that. Uh, Byron, you got me thinking about developing your own product to sell. This is a real challenge. I know a little bit about a lot of things. Need some uh, divine intervention to come up with something unique. Uh, okay, Byron, I'm going to have to bitch slap you. You do not need divine intervention. You need to sit your ass on a table, turn the television off, turn your cell phone off or over. If there's people that, you know, someone like you got a wife and kids, it's like, look, I'm doing this for an hour and I need to really focus, you know, if you could please only call me with an emergency and set an hour or two every day and just think, think, think. It's going to hurt. You're going to get headaches. But you need to do the work and it will come to you if you pull it out of yourself. Um, divine intervention is nice, but when you're leading the life of design and intent, you're making your own life and you're accountable for the good and you're also accountable for the bad. You cannot be accountable for just the bad, the good or the bad. I mean, because the whole thing, I'm not going to get overly talking to the religious thing because I'm not trying to offend anybody. But when you say this is my life and I'm responsible for the things that happen to be good or bad, that's a powerful thing. You can do it. I'm just saying you can do it. Uh, Hector, the address is Glendon at the American Hustler dot com for the garage sale book. 
under way. That would be a great idea for a meetup group, accountability partners for hustlers to keep us focused and maybe a little one-on-one -on -one competition. I think you're right. Do it. Make it happen. Uh, sent you another email for the book. It's good to see someone that wants to help entrepreneurs. Hey, y'all helping me build this course, so I'm very grateful. Uh, Josh Carter, law, yeah, the law is law nine. Went through actions, not arguments. Glendon has a video on it. Okay. Uh, Jacob, yeah, I go for walks to get inspirational ideas. It works really well. Jacob, um, let's just talk about that for a moment. When you're walking, I want you to think about what happens because, you know, when you get real introspective and a little weird like me, you think about this stuff. I get ideals when I am doing something else, and I finally figured out why. When you're sitting there, ideal, 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 you're, you're, you're just pressing in one area. When I go for walks, your body's in motion, your blood is moving, but your brain is also responsible for you doing the walking motion, right? So your brain is kind of like, Part of your brain is diverted. And if that little diversion opens up a door or something, because like you, I get all kinds of ideas when I'm walking. So that's one of the reasons I have my phone with me. And this is a tip. If you have an iPhone, you can use the recorder. If you have Android, there's a voice recorder. Whenever an idea comes to you, open up your recorder, say whatever the ideal it is to, and email it to your main email box. And that way, another idea can come and you can do the same thing. And you're not trying to hold on to it. Uh, Deanna, I got ide I, I got ideals come 24-7. I find I average maybe four hours sleep. I started my list at 18, now I'm pushing 50. <laughs> I can't stop it. It's probably as I live in an area that, that work a different kind of hustling. That's very cool. That is very, very cool. Okay, like I said, just, uh, oh, as I as promised, because I was getting ready to not do that. Let's see. Let's come out here. If, oh yeah, it'll be there. If you want to join the group. Okay. All right. If you want to join the Facebook group, these are the links. This is month to month. This is lifetime. If you want to join the online platform, and let me talk about the Facebook group. I have to add you to the Facebook group because there's no way for it to be automatic. So if you want to just go in there, there's uh, 16 days of webinars here right now. You can sign up here and immediately get started. It's a roughly 16, yeah, 16 hours. And based on the fastest versus the slowest, it's going to take you about three weeks to go through that stuff properly or maybe four. So you go ahead and get started. You will be plenty busy doing stuff and changing your life so that's how you will sign up for those courses also if you haven't gotten to a free audiobook just go there page a load and you can get the free audiobook tony marshall i hit 2500 a month but i don't want to attribute to the new things i learned but i can see making me more in the future Bet it says, thanks, you're welcome. Uh, Chris, when you start to design the life you want, please brace yourself for fallout. My marriage ended because I refused to live an old life. You know, I, I want to expand because I have a friend that's going through this right now. Um, she lost a ton of weight. Uh, she changed jobs. Uh, she's really She wrote four books that her family didn't know about. And recently, they've just like nutted up on her because... When you do this, and Chris is making a very valid point because this is not for the faint at heart. When you start to design the life you want, you're going to stir up a lot of negative energy in people who are not living how they want. And it's going to create jealousy. It's going to create ill will. And you're going to have potentially family fights. This is no joke. I'm, I mean, and I just want to be really honest with you and let you know what can potentially happen when you try to do this. Or you become successful at it because most people aren't living like this. Most people don't control their time. Uh, many people have jobs they absolutely despise. And here you are 
happy every day. Monday, oh, it's Monday? You're not going, oh, God, fuck, it's Monday. You're like, yeah, it's Monday. I'm going to make some more money. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to have lunch with friends. Many people are not going through that. So that's a very good point, Chris, because a lot of people, as you, and that's going to be a sign that you're being successful. It's going to be a, a really ugly sign because you're not going to like it. It's going to be uncomfortable. But when people start freaking out in your life and treating you kind of crazy, that's a sign that you're walking on the right path because it's coming. Uh, Manny, I paid two bucks and got a hundred some views on YouTube. It's crazy. Yeah, YouTube advertising is the best thing going right now because most people have no clue to what it is. Uh, you're welcome, Deanna. Uh, Jasmine, do you watch The Breakfast Club? Uh, no. Deanna sold her first item on uh, Craigslist. Congratulations. Manny's getting into the consulting business. Uh, Dana. Co-sign what you're saying right now. Those closest to you, they may they, they will, may not be comfortable with the new you. Uh, the term is you brand new. <laughs> really, it's kind of true. Okay, it's 4:55. I'm gonna shut this puppy down once again. Uh, there will not be a webinar tomorrow. There will be one Wednesday, but I will send out the emails and stuff. I want to say thanks to everyone that came out, and if you want to join the groups. Here they are. The links are under all the videos. All right, with that, this is Glendon. Thank you for coming out, and I'll see you on the good side.